if I may, I would like to link the Limparsa story with the AstraZeneca story, right? Because I think for, for us, it was like a, a milestone that opened a lot of opportunities and, and, and a new era for AstraZeneca in oncology. So our history in oncology started in the 70s when we were actually brought tamoxifen into breast cancer and then other hormonal therapies in both breast and, and prostate. And then kind of the company focused on other therapeutic areas. But since Pascal Soriot joined the company, there was a conscious decision that we want to be big players in oncology. Now, by the time he joined, we have um, acquired Made Immune, we have some products from the Made Immune portfolio. And the only innovation they've had at that point was Arresta for lung cancer. Now, Limparsa was our second step into that, and it was groundbreaking for many, many reasons. First of all, we were not directing the therapy towards cancer itself, but we were directing the, this therapy into specific subpopulations that are sensible to platinum and make them more sensible to that. We were starting in a new era that it was not just treating them, the, treating to obtain a response, but maintaining a response already um, obtained by another therapy. That's where our first indication in second line of ovarian cancer was. So it was very hard to go there in establish maintenance therapy. And the third thing that brought here is that it was one of the first directed therapies in that setting, in that maintenance therapy. So we inaugurated a new mechanism of action. We inaugurated a new, a new therapeutic morality. And we established BRCA as a market that is not only important for patients we have cancers that are driven by this mutation, but also a way of tasting relatives and patients that be but can be affected by this and identifying patients at risk. So since then, our story with Limparsa to summarize is we're now operating in four different tumor types, eight different indications, and we were able to change the lives directly of over 45,000 patients in the US. But if I may, because this is very close to my heart, Every time that you treat a cancer patient, you treat a family, you treat relatives because you bring in new opportunities. So we can only count on the 14,000 patients that we know use Limparsa in the last decade. But if you think about all the lives that were changed directly or indirectly, either because you give more opportunities to patients with ovarian, breast, prostate, or pancreatic cancer, but also on all the other relatives that were able to test themselves for BRCA mutations and could have taken action to prevent cancer which ultimately is what we all want to do. We want to prevent as many cancers as possible, treat as early as possible, because that is the, the, the route to cure. In, in breast cancer, you know that breast cancer is basically, in, in, in general, more historically has been either you're hormone receptor positive or you are... Um, her two positive since 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 the identification of the MR marker and then there was this third category, which was the triple negative. So where you are not estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, or her two receptor positive, then you are this other category. Well, we identified that patients with BRCA mutations were on top of this and overlapping with 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 these categories. So now, if you have a BRCA mutation, then that patient will definitely benefit from Limparsa as a whole. It's a different indication than the others. It's a smaller indication in one in terms of, of patients that are affected. But before Limparsa, the possibilities of these patients were, were worse. And now with Limparsa in the market, which has been in the market for quite some time, then we can offer better opportunities for patients. And this is one of many um, indications, as I mentioned before, all of them directed to BRCA or BRCA-related mutations. Now, since the start of our journey it was just the BRCA mutation, then it expands into HRR, HRD, which are other mutations that include BRCA1, BRCA2, and related and related genes, but all in the same sense. When you have a, a, a um, defect in, in the repair mechanisms, you're more sensitive to some to some to some chemotherapy, but then you can actually um, increase that by, in, by inhibiting the repression with a PARP inhibitor. So our research continues in to see what are the mechanisms we can include. And also, we want to provide better responses to these in populations and expand it. I don't know if you're aware, but we're working on a next generation of PARP inhibitors that are more selective and therefore can bring similar or better results in terms of efficacy, but manage some of the toxicities that the class have seen in the, in, in the, in the last years.
as I mentioned before, so if you are a patient today that suffers from a cancer that is driven by a BRCA mutation, that means uh, you have a defect in the reparation of the DNA that can, may cause cancer and are subject to this. Once you identify that mutation, patients in the, in, sorry, relatives in first degree may also carry that same mutation. There are some specific risk factors for this mutation, but then if you test for those, then you can prevent cancer as a whole. So there's different things that you can do uh, to prevent breast cancer and ovarian cancer specifically. Others like pancreatic and, and prostate are not that simple, but that's what we're aiming for. So not only identifying the patient, but use that single patient to identify families at risk and again, and prevent cancer. Our, if you see our portfolio, not only in, in breast or in ovarian cancer, one thing that is constant in our strategy is that we want to go earlier in the lines of therapy. So if you take the, the specific case of Lemparza, we started in ovarian cancer in second line, then we moved to first line. We started in, 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 in breast cancer in second line and first line, and we moved also to adjuvant setting because all those early interventions will provide better outcomes for patients. But the ultimate goal is, can we detect earlier in a place that a combination of surgery radiotherapy and chemotherapy can eradicate completely the cancer, or even better, can we prevent the occurrence of cancer by treating the pre-existing condition or advice on the patients on how to deal with specifically in, in BRCA mutations, in breast cancer and ovarian cancer to do an, a preemptive surgery to avoid cancer as a whole.